Wa I hope that your today is very good and prosperous for all of you. And we'll start our New Year uh, talk today, which is a very challenging talk even for myself. Because I call it creaturitarianism, not humanitarianism. This word was invented more than 15 years ago when we were discussing it in my office and I had my colleague who was a translator his name is Eid and who managed to do that to relate the sector that we are uh, specializing in addressing its need which is the humanitarian sector to be related to the Lord or the Creator not only the human being my first talk about it was in Minnesota University in 2006, which I was received negatively. It was received negatively by the audience, but I was protected by the professor who understood what I'm talking about. Let me take you to another uh, dimension. Why I'm talking about creaturitarianism? Because I, myself, in my own belief, want to relate everything into the creator, not to the human being who has been created by the creator. In 2006, I was delivering a keynote speech in one of the universities in Oxford about faith-based organization. I said, and I'm still believing it, you are using the faith as a divisive tool to divide our community as a humanitarian or social community. Those faith-based organizations come to this side. The non-faith-based organization come to this side. The funding of the government for the faith-based organization will be the side, and the funding for the gov- for, of, of the government for the non-faith organization will be side. For me, it's a divisive tool. They are used faith to divide the humanitarian community. In my own view, we should not call it faith-based or non-faith-based, because liberalism, secularism, socialism, uh, uh, communism and capitalism are faith-driven and faith-created by their own believers in it. While Islam, Christianity, Judaism and Hinduism and others are also faith, faith-driven by God, inshallah. So for me, it is called, let us call it value-based. And this is what made me to create this challenging discussion for all of you or all of us today at the, very, the first talk of the 2020 value-based creaturitarianism, not humanitarianism. Next, please. When we look at this table, we found on the left, a human at the top, humanity, humanitarianism, humanism, humanitarian, and, 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 okay? When we look at the counterpart, in my own view, we found I bought cre- creature, Creator, this creator, not creature. The top one is wrong, creator. Creator, creaturity, creaturitarianism, creaturism, uh, creaturitarian, creature, creatures, creation, and created. So if we look at the top on the right hand side, it should be the creator, not creature. And the top on the left hand side is a human. Creator, when we have in our philosophy of thinking, when we drive our social uh, sector or humanitarian sector and put the human to be on the top of the pyramid and the creator to be on the top of the other pyramid. Let us see what we'll see on the second slide. Well, can you can correct this instead of creature, make it creator. Next slide, please. This is here. These are my first slide. The first model, humanitarianism. As I said, who is going to make the legislation for our sector is the human being. The human being is the one who is making the legislation. The one who will become reference point for all of us. Who is going to be the judge? The human beings as well. Who are going to be the juries? The human beings as well. And who are going to be the criminals or the suspect or whatever it is? The human beings. So the human being will be the one who has become the legislator 
and judge and jury and criminals. On the other side, which is the second model, when you look at the same, the same pyramid, we find the legislator in the other side is the creator, not the human being. But human being could become a judge, could become jury, because he is going to be the criminal. So at least in this pyramid, we look at the legislations coming from the creator, not from the human being who is one day will become a judge, one day will become a jury, and one day he himself or she herself becomes the criminal herself. So how can I become the legislator, the judge, the jury, and the criminal at the same time? That's why this is my philosophy of thinking, and I believe in it strongly, because I should think that we should refer things back to the one who created us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we look at the cycle of life of this is spruce tree with a bud worm and with a, a bird eating the, uh, the, the, the leaves. Can we look at the other one? This is a cycle going around. You can see the creator is making a balance for the insect, for the, for the tree, and for the bird. So the insect eats the uh, what do you call it, the, the leaves of the tree, then the bird eats the insects and the cycle goes around. This is how human, the human being could not be able to do this cycle. The cycle and the relationship between the bird, the insect, and the tree is created by the Allah who makes the system for humanity to go as perfect as it is. Next one, please. What we need to do now, to be very honest with ourselves, is a challenge for anyone listening to me today. If you listen, if you don't listen, if you don't like it, it's up to you. But actually, I'm talking about myself. We need to redefine humanitarianism. Humanitarianism is not an exclusive to mankind. On the contrary, it is comprehensive to everything and everyone created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if we are not aware of them, we have to free our minds from limited and one-sided orbits. Even in our humanitarianism, it has to be all-inclusive. All-inclusive, all-inclusive, and referring our humanitarianism to the one who created us from nothing. Look at this. This a cart and this human being and he's driving it. Defining humanitarianism as a concept related to mankind only leads us to ignore. You see, let me say it again. Defining, defining humanitarianism as a concept related to mankind only leads us to ignore the rest of creature, creatures created by God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who are our partners in this universe and to serve us and to help us throughout our lives. When we focus only on human being, we exclude our partners who make life easy for us. Okay? Man should not overlook those creatures and their creative roles which should be considered as complementary and the integrative to our own in running and leading life. So those creatures that Allah created have been created to serve us, to prepare the planet for our selves. So we should, whenever we run any social or any humanitarian program or any developmental program, they should be included. They should be included, they should be included because they are partners in our society, in our community, in our country, in our planet. But why creatureitarianism? I'm very adamant. Creator, creature, creaturity, creatureitarianism, that's what I believe in. Because I have to refer myself to a higher authority, actually, than myself to guide me. 
in humanitarianism, the higher authority is the human being, not God himself. Why Christianism? I use the word creature to refer to the non-human. Creature could be anyone. Could be bird, could be animal, could be climate, could be anything. Okay. I use the word creature to refer to the non-human, not only living things such as birds, animals, insects, and fish, and, 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 by, but encompassing and including non-living things such as climate, environment, mountains, seas, rivers. Though, though I know that this is not a strict dictionary definition. My definition here is not from Oxford or from Cambridge Dictionary. It is something that we have to develop. We should not follow blindly what has been de 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 defined wrongly. We should not follow blindly what have been defined wrongly. Creature, creatureitarianism, creaturity, creaturism, and on, and so on, so on, so on, so on, so on. Okay, clear? This is why to be all-inclusive, encompassing all creatures of God who are our partners in this life. Look at this creation of man. From clay, that as you can see, where is the clay? From clay to the leash, or the, not for, to the, the blood clot. Let, let me read the, the ayah for you. We created man from an extract of clay. That's number one. Then we made him or her as a drop in a place of settlement, firmly fixed, which is a nutfa. That you can see it here. Okay. Then we made the drop into an alaqa, alaqa, which is a leash, suspended thing, and blood clot. Al alaqa, which is here, the leash or the clot. Then we made alaqa into mudra. Mudra, where is the mudra? It is not clear here. Well, this is the Sumite, but mudra. You know what mudra means in Arabic? Something that you chew. And when the scientist heard this in the Quran and found that the chewing is what Allah said, uh, 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 written there, it's exactly the Sumite state, which is in one, this one. If you look at closer at this mudra. Okay, you found that if you have got a piece of bread and you're chewing it and coming out, this looks exactly like the mudra. So from the clay to the blood clot to the leash to the mudra. Then after that, it goes on to become the bone, the flesh and everything. So this is the cycle. You know, we have seen the cycle uh, of, of, of life between the insect, the bird and the leaves. Okay, and now we see the cycle of creation of man, you and me. There's a system here, and there was a system there. The system there was between three objects, the bird, the insect, and the tree. Here, it is my creation and your creation. It goes to all these stages. This is a system. Very clear, comprehensive, perfect system. Next one, please. Look at the animal, the, the ants, or the actually uh, uh, the insects. The insects have a kingdom. In the valley, this is actually the ant. If you know the story of King Solomon, when he was going by his army, and he heard, because God has given him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him the ability to understand the, 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 the languages of things. Okay? And one of the ants was telling, in the valley of ants, this valley of ants, they have discovered, which has been mentioned in the Quran more than 1400 years ago, they have discovered that the valley of ants, I saw some of these valley of ants in Somalia when I was there, it's on actually... My Facebook, you can look at it. So this, he was very, very surprised and thanking Allah of understanding the message from the ant, which is like the guard or the infantry, telling everybody, get in, get in, get in, get in, Suleiman is coming. He might crush you. And this is how there's a system here inside the family of the ants, in the valley of the ants. Okay, but the system for the creation of man, system the relationship between the bird and the insect and uh, the, the tree and system inside the colony or the valley of the ants. Okay, next one. And there's a greater system here. You look at actually these lives, 
together. We are not here in a zoo or in a... No, it, this is really life. All going to, according to a perfect system. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said here, and there is no creature on or within the earth or bird that flies with its wings except that they are communities. In whom umman illa amsalukum. Every one of them, like that, that, that I talked about that, they are umman, they are communities like yourself. They have got guards, they have got leaders, they have got dreams, they have got families, they have got aspirations, they have got communities. And you can see that now in the, in, 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 in the planet, uh, in the, what you call the channel or the YouTube of the planet and the earth and all this sort of thing. You can find this happening here and there actually to uh, do that. We have not neglected in the, resist, in, in the register. Allah said that. It is it's Surah 6, verse uh, uh, six, uh, 38. We have not neglected in the register a thing. Say it again. And there is no creature on the earth or bird that flies with its wings except that they are communities like you. We have not neglected in the register a thing then unto their lord they will be gathered they'll be gathered back by the will of allah this is surah uh, 6 uh, verse 38 and this is bigger bigger system between the different galaxies and the different uh, what you call it stars and shooting stars and other and the sun runs to a term appointed for it. This is actually Surah uh, uh, 36, verse 38. And this sun is going, as, 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 as the sun runs to a term appointed for it. System. 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 Actually, that is the decree of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's a system between the stars and the moon. There's a system inside the family or the valley of the ants. There's a system between the birds, the trees, the insects, and there's a system between all the different uh, partners of animals and birds and others who are actually being created to serve us. So there's a, there's a perfect system that you have to follow. Okay. When you look at this, the world now works according to a complex and perfect plan and whether we believe that this plan was drawn up by creator. This is a belief and disbelief. People know there's, there's a perfect plan. But whether we believe that it is this plan being created by a creator, by nature itself, or by some other methods, there is no doubt that they're healthy successful and the continuous life for us all depends on our adherence to this plan if we destroy the plan we destroy the planet if we destroy the plan we destroy our life if we destroy the plan or we will have another plan we actually destroy the earth as you can see it nowadays all what's happening there is because the greed of man and the ignorance of man who are trying to destroy the system that has been created perfectly, in my own view, is by Allah. In your view, it's entirely up to you. It's called void, you call it, uh, call it nature, you call it whatever you call it. By breaking the rules, it is us who will ultimately pay the price. By breaking the rules of the role, of, of, of the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be the people who will pay the price. And we are seeing it as I speak nowadays and We'll be seeing it again and again and again. By breaking the rules, we created more problems for us. So look at here, more conflicts. That's what's happening nowadays. More conflicts and war in Syria, in Iraq, in Yemen, in everywhere. Yogur, uh, Sudan, Libya, uh, Rohingya, and uh, Palestine, uh, 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 Latin America, and everywhere. This is the conflict. Migration and people deportation between the east and west and the north and south, as you can see it. 
the displaced people, internal displaced, and the refugees, and the poor people, and so on, so on, so on, so on. This is what, because we are destroying the plan, the perfect plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Increasing desert, uh, the, the desert land, okay, and destroying the natural shelters. With commercialization, we change forests into developing a properties place, and this will lead into what we see nowadays of climate change and what we see nowadays, as you can see it in what's happening as we speak now, or more than 500,000 animals and creatures of Allah have been under threat in Australia with the fire over the last few days. Leads to trying to destroy the plant, leads to environmental pollution, global warming, and climate change. Okay? Increasing poverty as well because of the climate change, environmental pollution, and global warming. It leads to least poverty around the whole world. Increase an economic gap. Between whom? Between the rich industrialized states and the poor states. The gap would be bigger, 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 and it's happening. Because commercialization and industrialization is disturbing the planet and disturbing the system, the perfect system that has been created by Allah. So if we refer our system in life to Allah, and instead of referring it to the human being who is destroying and neglecting and killing the species who have been, crea who have been created to serve him and her on this planet. Look at this here, and floods. Droughts, fires are all results of breaking the rules leading to climate change. Last year, there was a fire in the Amazon. You have seen it. Angola, Congo. This year, when we look at it now, for the last few days or a week or two, we talk about Australia, huge fire. Actually, uh, flooding in Kenya, uh, flooding in Mozambique, uh, flooding in Somalia. Flooding everywhere. There's a reason for that. We spoil and we are spoiling and we're still spoiling the planet because of our commercialization of everything and destruction and destroying the system or trying to destroy the system that Allah has created to make a balance between all the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Creaturitarianism, not humanitarianism. Next, please. Difficulties within our sector. Our sector, which is a humanitarian sector. Specializing in it, okay? Charity, charity, I call about charity. Forget about the different definition of charity that everybody is trying to make it charity or humanitarian or developmental. This is this actually hypothetical. Charity for me, the Amal Khair, has extended, has existed since the creation of man. It's not something invented by the West or the East. This is a part of the culture of the... Uh, of the culture of the nature of every creation of God, whether he or she a human being, or he or she as a non-human being. Okay? So this is something long time ago. What makes it difficult for us is our, what, I, what I'm calling is our humanitarian imperialism. Humanitarian imperialism. Humanitarian colonialism. Why? Because I want to impose my philosophy of thinking. I want to impose my values. I want to change the culture of people. And this is wrong. And this is what's happening nowadays from the, what you call it, donor culture. Okay, the donor culture impose on you certain culture, certain values, certain religion. That's why actually we find it difficult to come to a village and you impose on me something I don't believe in it. This could be in myself a crime against me as a human being who needs your help, but you impose me, you have to be like me if I want to get the help from me. No, 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 the, let's the, the, don't. You see, our insistence that our approach, our culture, our value, our management is the best, is either my way or the highway. Either my way or the highway. If you, get, if you want to get my money, do what I want you to do. This is wrong. This is not humanitarian, not social, not moral even. Next, please. Either from, gov from government or from organization. Differences. Is there any differences between the West and the East and North and South of doing this charity work? No. 
Okay, there's no difference, no much difference between conceptions of charity in the West, East, North, and West, or anywhere in the world. But there is a difference in approach based on culture, history, religious backgrounds of people. You have to respect the culture, the history, and the religious background of them. But the approach, but all of us believe in the charity work. Charity is a natural instinct for every creature. It is a universal. It's nothing special about charity. It's like, oh, this is for the American, this is for the Portuguese, this is for the Spaniard, this is for the Egyptian, this is for the Saudi, this is for the Yemeni, this is for... Uh, it's the same, all the same. This is for the Indian or Pakistani or whatever you call it, whether it's German or Italian, whatever it is. It is there. It's universal. Okay? Next, please. How to make a change? This is, this is a big ask for the decision maker. If we want to make a change, we have to enable the people who are trying to change to start their process of change. Not to fight them. To empower them. Not to lead them. To let them to lead us. To be led by them. Because they are on the ground. Do you know what to do in their locality? Top-bottom approach is not there anymore. It becomes out of fashion. It's number one. Number two, the process of change has to start internally. Internally. In Juba, in South Sudan. In uh, Maqdishu, in Somalia. In uh, Jigjiga in Ethiopia, in Limi, in Togo. These countries, these areas, those people, not only in the capital, but in the villages, in the countryside, has to come from there. It has to come from there, not from London or Paris or Rome or Geneva or what do you call it, or Geneva or Washington. No, 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 no. Or Saudi Arabia or, or Riyadh or Kuwait. No, no. Solution is local. Solution is local. Solution is local. Okay, change starts in the family. The, the, the simplest way to change is I have to look after my family. I am a husband as a man and I am a wife as a woman and have children. I have to change because the family is like a, a, a social component, one of the important social component of any society. or One of the most important civil society organization inside the society. The change has to come from there, from the mother, from the father, Actually, from the children and so on. Next, please. Now we talk about organizations. If the organization, we call it a non-government organization, and the like, are continue to effectively help humanity, then they must begin to take note of what? Of the rest of the universe. We cannot work in exclusion from our, our outside the universe. So they have to uh, take note of the rest of the universe and all that is in, in it, in the side of the universe. As I mentioned, water, climate, habitat, and so on, so on, so on. From the tiniest drop of water to the vastest ocean and from the smallest flower to the largest tree. Why they have been created? Because there's a balance. In this village, I'll go and cut all the trees. Go and do this. Go and do this. What's wrong? You have to understand why these trees are there. Why these flowers are there. Why the birds and the animals and the insects are there. Because there is a balance between all of them. This is for the NGO. Or for the non-government organization. And for the government organization. Gender equality. In our religion, as Muslims, I'm very proud of this. And the gender equality in Islam. And it is there. So don't come and lecture me and say there is no gender equality. This approach to respect all and inspired by our faith oblige us to explore gender issue. The believing male and the believing male, the praying male and the praying female, and so on, so on. So the reward. The framework of Christianism applies to all humans, female and male alike who are equal before the Creator and deserve equal recognition and appreciation for the value and the importance of their lives to the society, as well as access to equal opportunities 
and their God-given rights to accomplish their human potential. So here in front of the society, a woman has a role, a man has a role, and both of them complementing another, and this supported by the Creator Himself who gives the chance, who gives the rights to, it's, it's God giving rights to male and female to serve the community and to explore their potentials. Solution. I mentioned this solution, the first time I mentioned it was a, it was a, 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 a workshop called Perception organized by uh, MSF in London 2009-2010. And they came with this fat case, the relationship between the international non-government organization and the role in the local community. Fat, as you can see it here, uh, based on the tree. All this relationship, the fat and the kiss, based on the tree. What's our tree, the good tree? T for trust, R for respect, E for engagement, E for empowerment. Yani my philosophy or my philosophy of the fat kiss should be based to the foundation of trust of the tree, the plantation of the tree, which is the trust, respect, engagement, empowerment of whom? Of the local community. Of the local community. Let us look at the fat and the kiss. The fat here is the role of the international organization. What does it mean? Fat, as you can see, an acronym for fat is fundraising. A is advocacy. T is training. So you as international organization have the know-how, have the experience, have the fund, and have the access to international community to advocate for me. So you provide me with the fat funding, training, and advocate for me. Okay? That's your role. For the solution okay the case comes from the local community which is myself k is knowledge based i is innovative s is sustainable s is solution so the local community will provide you as an international community with the case when you provide them with the fat so if you fundraise advocate and train, they will be able to find the knowledge base, sustainable, uh, knowledge base, innovative, sustainable solution. So it's equal partnership. Don't ever and never, don't ever and never say that I have the money, my value is above them. No, they have the sustainable, knowledge base, sustainable, innovative solution. That's the knowledge base, innovative, sustainable solution. They are equal. Sit with you. And this is where the arrogance of the NGO or the international organization when they sit down and look down at those people because they don't speak English, they don't speak French, they don't speak whatever it is, and said, oh my God, they are very, very, very backward. No, but they are the people who have the solution underneath their belt, underneath their feet. Okay? Next, please. This is to end this, uh, our discussion. I'm a little bit uh, apologetic for you for actually extending it five more minutes, but it's a very difficult subject. Christianitarianism, referring our work in humanity to the Creator. Humanitarianism is referring our work for humanity to human beings. This is my belief. I put for you on the table as a challenge for you for the first week in, 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 uh, in, uh, in the year or in the decade. And tomorrow, I think, is uh, uh, our Orthodox uh, and the Christian brothers and sisters are celebrating uh, Christmas. On the seventh, congratulations for everyone there. And I wish you a happy day, inshallah. And inshallah, tomorrow evening, six o'clock, Ghadan, Sa'a Sadisa, Satakun Al Muhadara, Nafs Al Muhadara, Bilog Al Arabia, Smal Khala Aqiya, Wal Insania. Al Khala Aqiya, Lays Al Insania. Inshallah, tomorrow, Khala Aqiya, Lays Al Insania, Sa'a Sitta, Misa'an, Tawqit London, Tisam Sam, Tawqit. Uh, uh, Makkah Mukarramah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh